Well, happy Friday, everyone. Hope you're doing well and have enjoyed your week and are looking forward to a happy and fun-filled weekend. Well, last week we looked at a Canadian hero by the name of Vincent Coleman, the hero of the Halifax explosion tragedy. Well, today we're going to look at another Canadian hero, another one you've probably never heard of, but he's probably touched more lives than Vincent Coleman and not only in Canada, but in the U.S. and in other parts of the world. And I bet you probably never heard of him before. But he touches your life every day. Who am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about Charles Saunders. You're going, oh yeah, that's a household name I know. I bet you didn't. Alrighty, let's look at who is Charles Saunders. Ignoring his Ph.D. in chemistry... Canadian Charles E. Saunders took up a career as a classical pianist instead. He advertised concerts, recitals, and music instruction. But in Toronto, Ontario, Canada in the 19th century, demand for his music was as flat as the earth before Christopher Columbus proved it was round. Between gigs, Charles loved to munch on well-constructed sandwiches. The only thing he disliked the quality of the bread that held them together. It finally became clear to everyone, even Charles, that he wasn't going to make any bread, so to speak, playing piano. So the young man dusted off his chemistry degree and went to work for Sir William Saunders. Sir William was a famous agricultural researcher who had made his mark crossbreeding seeds to develop new strains of berries, grains, and vegetables. He was also Charles's father. Charlie spent plenty of summers helping his father do agricultural research. Now he threw himself into the family profession, during which he would soon make bread in earnest. In 1886, Sir William was named director of Canada's spanking new experimental farms, five in all, set up primarily due to his earlier successes at crossbreeding seeds. One of the goals of the experimental farms was to develop a wheat seed strain that could withstand the cold, harsh Canadian prairie climates. At that time, the Canadian government worried that the United States might want to push its borders north of the 49th parallel, was eager to settle the prairies with loyal Canadian citizens. But farmers on the prairies were desperate for good wheat with a short growing season because they often lost their entire crop to an early hard frost. Some settlers were leaving the prairies because they couldn't make a living. Sir William had traveled throughout the world gathering wheat seeds that Charles started mixing as early as 1892. In 1893, fiddling about in his greenhouse, Charles crossbred seed provided by farmers in the Ukraine and India. His new strain grew faster than the wheat popular at the time and the yield was impressive. But would the wheat, once it became flour, make a bread up to Charles's high standards and produce a good sandwich? Charles was still on the project in 1903 when Dad made him the Dominion cerealist. To Charles, this simply meant he could spend his days building a better sandwich. One habit he had learned in all those chemistry classes was to test, test, test. Charles developed the famous Saunders gluten test, gluten being the material that provides bread dough with its elasticity and holds the bread slice together. The Saunders test didn't require a lab. Our Charles could pluck a kernel in the field, chew it, and instantly know if its gluten quality was good enough. If it were a good chew, he reasoned it should make a good bread. He didn't hand off the grain to the local miller, or the flour to the local baker. No, not Charles. Charles did the milling and baking himself, and the tasting too. After years of experimentation, he was finally satisfied. In 1910, the seed, named Marquis Wheat, was distributed to Canadian prairie farmers for spring planting. It was a huge success. By 1920, 90% of the more than 17 million acres of wheat grown in North American prairies was Marquis. Three times in the course of that decade, a farmer who'd entered his Marquis wheat in the New York land show 
won a thousand dollar prize for the best hard spring wheat grown anywhere in the world. Canadian wheat produced such a baking friendly flour that markets sprang up for the crop. Canadian prairie farmers, thanks to Marquis Wheat, grew prosperous, filling the breadbasket of the world. And even now, many years since Charles's death in 1937, the Marquis strain still courses through the pedigrees of most wheat. And what was our hero's reaction? He was probably gratified by awards that included a knighthood in 1934. But he may have been even happier to know that all his patient work ultimately created a sturdy sandwich. <laughs> so there you go. When you eat your next sandwich or slice your next loaf of bread, think of good old Charles. Because if it wasn't for his crossbreeding of different types of wheat seeds, we wouldn't have the high gluten flour we have today that makes a good solid slice of bread. Now, if you are a gluten-free kind of person, you may not think too highly of poor Charles, but he still did wonders for the farmers of North America. So there you have it. So there's your name to put up on the list of Canadian heroes next to Vincent Coleman. You can add Charles Saunders. Alrighty. Now you've had time to chew that over, I suppose you think you deserve a groaner. Well, this fellow went to his doctor and said, Doc, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I just can't seem to do the things around the house and the yard and, and get things done like I used to. I just I don't know what's wrong. So the doctor gave him an absolutely thorough physical, and he did blood tests and urine analysis and stool, took a stool sample and did everything he could think of check this fella out. And finally he called him back into the office and the guy says, what is it doc? Tell me straight. I can take it. What's wrong with me? And the doctor said, well, I'm afraid to tell you, you're just plain lazy. And the guy goes, well, um, well, uh, can you tell me the scientific name for that so I can tell my wife? <laughs> there you go. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Tuesday for Tuesdays with the Pilgrim. Until then, take care, stay safe, and God bless.